Our story begins on the golden sands of Miami Beach, where the brilliant sun kisses the Atlantic and sea foam whispers tales to the shore. It was here that we first encountered the Smith family, Hannah and Logan, and their two young children, Jimmy and Natasha. Hannah, a radiant woman of 32, had a smile that lit up a room and a laugh that echoed happiness. Her husband, Logan, a few years her senior, was her perfect counterpart. He was a robust, bearded man with a steady gaze and an aura of calm. Their bond was a beautiful tapestry of shared dreams, love, and respect. Together, they created a cocoon of warmth for their children, eight-year-old Jimmy and five-year-old Natasha. Jimmy was a spitting image of his father, but with his mother's contagious laughter. Natasha, on the other hand, with her large hazel eyes and a crown of curly locks, resembled Hannah. Yet it was her quiet strength, much like Logan's, that shone through her innocent exterior. Her most cherished possession was a doll, a raggedy little thing, but it held her heart. She'd named it Emily, and the two were inseparable. The Smiths had spent a week in Miami, surrendering themselves to the allure of the sea and the charm of beachside picnics. They built sandcastles, played volleyball, splashed about in the surf, and feasted on sumptuous seafood. It was a glorious vacation, brimming with sun-soaked days and laughter-filled nights the perfect antidote to their otherwise busy lives. However, every holiday has an end, and the Smiths' idyllic retreat was no exception. On the final day, they decided to soak in a few more hours of the ocean's serenity. Time, like the sea, slipped away unnoticed. By the time Hannah glanced at her watch, their faces drained of color. They were late. Their flight was due to depart from Miami International Airport soon. In the ensuing chaos of hurriedly gathering their belongings, they overlooked something, something vital. Emily, Natasha's beloved doll, was forgotten, lying forsaken on the beach. As the Smiths raced against time, weaving through the traffic in their rented car, Natasha's doll remained amidst the sand dunes, awaiting its owner's return. The family had no inkling of the impending storm that this small oversight would stir in their lives. Once ensconced in their seats on the plane, the magnitude of their oversight began to take hold. Natasha's wails of despair filled the cabin, her tears streaming relentlessly down her flushed cheeks. The once vibrant Emily was left behind, abandoned on a beach thousands of miles away. Hannah, usually the embodiment of composed, now found herself at a loss. Logan, in his attempt to comfort Natasha, promised her a new doll as soon as they landed. Her sobs, however, were inconsolable. Their fellow passengers cast disgruntled glances their way, their peaceful flight disrupted by the heartbroken cries of a child. The gentle hum of the aircraft was punctuated by Natasha's grief, her small body racked with sobs. Amid the rising tension, Hannah and Logan traded desperate glances. How could they have been so forgetful? Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the plane touched down, bringing with it a wave of relief. However, their ordeal was far from over. As they made their way back home in their car, Natasha's crying became unbearable. Their peaceful family vacation had ended in a cacophonous nightmare. Driving through the familiar roads, Logan spotted a glimmer of hope, a garage sale at an old Victorian house. Amid the jumble of antique furniture, dusty books, and worn-out appliances, something caught his eye. A porcelain doll, its golden curls framing a cherubic face, and a pair of glassy blue eyes that seemed to hold a strange depth. Logan, spurred by desperation and the promise he had made to Natasha, pulled over. The owner of the house, an elderly man with a weather-beaten face, sat in a rickety chair, watching over the items like a guardian of forgotten memories. Logan, pointing at the doll, announced his intention to buy it. The man gave Logan a long, measuring look, his faded eyes hiding a hint of sadness. The doll, he explained, belonged to his late mother. She had named it Isabella. It was a relic from a bygone era, 
a discontinued line of dolls, lovingly cared for throughout the years. He made it clear to Logan that the doll wasn't just a toy. It demanded respect, almost as if it were a living being. Logan, under the pressure of returning to his crying child, paid little heed to the man's words. He assured the man that the doll would be well-treated, handing over fifteen dollars in exchange for the peculiar porcelain figure. Tucking Isabella under his arm, he returned to the car, unaware that his impulsive purchase was more than just a means to pacify his daughter. The sight of Logan approaching with a doll under his arm seemed to pacify Natasha for a moment. Her crying subsided, replaced by hiccuping sobs as she stared at the doll with a mixture of curiosity and longing. Hannah, however, regarded the doll with an immediate sense of distaste. It reeks of age, Hannah grimaced, peering at the doll. Its porcelain skin was dull. The once vibrant dress faded and threadbare. The blue eyes, staring unblinkingly, sent a chill down her spine. We can't give her this, Logan. It's unsanitary. Logan, tired and in no mood for argument, watched as Hannah snatched the doll and placed it in the trunk, amid a jumble of suitcases and other luggage. Natasha protested, but Hannah promised to clean the doll as soon as they reached home. Upon their arrival, Hannah stuck to her word. Taking Isabella to the kitchen, she meticulously cleaned the doll with warm water and dish soap, scrubbing away years of dust and grime. Meanwhile, Logan began the tedious task of unloading and unpacking their luggage. In one suitcase, Logan discovered a disaster. A crystal figurine they'd purchased as a souvenir wrapped carefully and placed securely in the middle of their clothes, lay shattered. Frowning, he picked up the broken shards. He was sure he'd packed it properly. The unsettling incident added to their mounting frustrations. After Hannah finished cleaning Isabella, she handed the doll to a delighted Natasha. As the night wore on, the family attempted to regain a sense of normalcy, but an undercurrent of unease had begun to permeate the house. Over the next few days, a series of odd occurrences started to plague their household. Doors creaked open on their own, items seemed to move out of place, and eerie whispers filled the silent corridors at night. An unsettling coldness seeped into rooms that Isabella frequented. Hannah started to grow suspicious of the doll. Its uncannily realistic blue eyes seemed to follow her around the room. There were times when she would find the doll in places where Natasha insisted she hadn't left it. An uneasy feeling nested in her heart. The house, which once resonated with warmth and laughter, now bore an unsettling aura. Was it just her paranoia, or was Isabella more than just a doll? The Smith household, once a beacon of happiness and warmth, started to take on an ominous aura. The days were filled with unsettling occurrences, and the nights echoed with inexplicable whispers. What was once considered random and explainable was now acquiring a sinister undertone. Hannah noticed a change in Isabella. The doll, now cleaned and cherished, sat quietly in Natasha's room, but its glassy eyes seemed to hold a knowing look. At times, Hannah felt an uncanny chill in the doll's presence, a coldness that seemed to creep into her bones. One morning, Hannah found Isabella sitting on the kitchen table, an area strictly out of bounds for Natasha's toys. When questioned, Natasha insisted she hadn't left Isabella there. Instances like this multiplied, each incident heightening Hannah's apprehension about the doll. However, it was an incident involving Jimmy that escalated the fear. One sunny afternoon, Jimmy was playing with his toy car in the backyard, a little oasis where the children often played. Natasha, having grown very fond of Isabella, brought the doll outside to join them. When Jimmy, in his innocent playfulness, ran over Isabella with his toy car, a sudden cold wind whipped through the yard. That evening, Jimmy complained of feeling unwell. A fever raged through his small body, leaving him weak and listless. His once cheerful face was pale, and his laughter was replaced by moans of discomfort. The doctors were baffled, 
unable to diagnose the sudden illness. Meanwhile, Hannah couldn't shake off the feeling that Jimmy's illness was tied to the incident in the backyard. Was it possible that the doll was responsible? Was Isabella taking revenge for the perceived slight? The questions whirled in her mind, fueling her growing terror. As the night fell, a sense of dread settled in the Smith household. A nightmare had begun, triggered by the very item they had hoped would bring comfort to their daughter. As the eerie whispers in the silent corridors grew louder, it was clear that Isabella was no ordinary doll. She was a haunting entity, her true nature gradually revealing itself. The correlation between Jimmy's declining health and the strange occurrences surrounding Isabella had become too stark to ignore. Hannah was convinced the doll was a vessel of malevolent energy, a puppet dancing to the tune of an unseen, supernatural force. Her instincts screamed danger. Determined to protect her family, Hannah decided to confront the evil that lurked within their home. Late in the night, when the house lay silent, she quietly entered Natasha's room and took Isabella. She felt a chilling jolt of energy as she picked up the doll. Its eyes stared back at her, lifeless yet filled with an eerie intent. Suppressing her fear, Hannah decided to burn the doll, hoping to rid her family of the torment it had unleashed. As Hannah moved towards the backyard, she felt an unseen force try to wrestle the doll from her grasp. Undeterred, she continued, her love for her children fueling her resolve. She set the doll ablaze and watched as the flames devoured it, praying that this would end their nightmare. However, as soon as the doll was engulfed in flames, Hannah felt a searing pain rip through her. It felt as if the flames were burning her instead of the doll. She let out a terrified scream, collapsing on the ground. Her vision blurred. The last image imprinted on her mind was of the doll's malicious stare. Hannah's screams woke up the household, but by the time Logan reached her, it was too late. Hannah was found lifeless on the backyard, her eyes wide open in fear. The doll surprisingly lay a few feet away, untouched by the flames. Hannah's brave attempt to protect her family ended in a horrifying death, adding another victim to Isabella's wrath. Soon after, Jimmy's condition worsened. Despite their best efforts, the doctors were unable to save him. His death, coming so soon after Hannah's, plunged the Smith household into a deep abyss of grief. The family they once were was now shattered, with only Logan and Natasha remaining, haunted by the doll and its terrifying power. Logan, shattered by the loss of his wife and son, found himself standing on the precipice of terror and despair. In his heart, he knew there was a sinister connection between the horrifying deaths and Isabella, the doll they had brought home. He was haunted by the terrifying realization that the doll harbored an ominous power that had wreaked havoc on his family. Desperate for answers, Logan began to investigate the doll's origins. He retraced his steps to the garage sale, hoping to glean some information. His inquiries led him to a terrifying truth. The doll was allegedly possessed by the spirit of a vengeful witch who sought revenge for her untimely death. Back home, Isabella's malevolent presence had grown stronger. Logan could feel her watching him, her icy gaze following him around the house. The once warm and inviting house was now a chilling playground for the haunted doll. Items moved on their own, chilling whispers echoed through the night, and Logan was often gripped by a paralyzing fear. As days passed, Logan felt himself falling under Isabella's control. He found himself doing things he couldn't remember, waking up in places he didn't recall going to, and hearing whispers that commanded him to harm himself. Isabella was tightening her grip, her reign of terror reaching new heights. In a desperate bid to fight against the malevolent entity, Logan decided to confront Isabella. Gripped by a terror he never thought he could experience, he grabbed the doll, intending to dispose of it once and for all. However, the moment he touched Isabella, he felt a powerful force hurling him across the room. He crashed against the wall, feeling a searing pain as he collapsed on the floor. Logan's fight was short-lived, 
The doll, possessing a power beyond human comprehension, manipulated the situation, orchestrating a gruesome end for Logan. His body was discovered the next morning, lifeless and contorted in an unnatural position. Another victim had been claimed by the haunting entity that was Isabella. In the aftermath of the horrifying incidents, little Natasha found herself in a world that was bereft of warmth and love. The laughter, the joy, the comfort of her family's presence all had been replaced by a deafening silence. Oblivious to the terrifying truth behind the demise of her family, Natasha sought solace in the only constant in her life, Isabella. The social services, while dealing with the tragic case, decided to let Natasha keep the doll. They were oblivious to the doll's haunting history, assuming it was just a child's toy, a source of comfort for a girl who had lost her family. Natasha, in her innocence, held on to Isabella tightly, promising to care for the doll as she would a dear friend. Unbeknownst to her, she was nurturing the very entity that had caused her family's untimely end. Isabella, the haunted doll, found a new guardian in Natasha. Its glassy eyes seemed to glint with an eerie satisfaction as Natasha held it close. The legacy of terror was being unknowingly perpetuated by a girl who was just looking for a companion in her lonely world. The story concludes with Natasha cradling Isabella, whispering promises of companionship and care. Little did she know that she was stoking the embers of a long-standing curse carrying forward a gruesome legacy of terror. The chilling truth remained unknown to Natasha, while the rest of the world remained oblivious to the horrifying saga of the haunted doll, Isabella.